Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our second lesson on flight instruments. We're going to be discussing the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator obviously measures our airspeed. This is the speed at which the aircraft travels through the air. And obviously because air is a moving fluid, it is different from the ground speed. The airspeed indicator measures dynamic pressure and converts this dynamic pressure to airspeed. The total pressure from the pitot tube, subtracting the static pressure from the static port, provides dynamic pressure. The pitot air goes to the inside of a bellows. If we look here on this diagram on the right, here's the pitot tube. The air travels in here, along the tube and inside of this bellows. The static air, by contrast, goes and fills the inside of the airspeed indicator. As the total pressure from the pitot tube increases, this bellows gets bigger, and via a gear system, the airspeed that's indicated increases. On the other hand, let's just say we're in a descent and at a constant airspeed, uh, let's say a constant true airspeed. The air pressure is going to increase in the static port as we descend, providing increased pressure inside, making the bellows smaller, therefore indicating a lower indicated airspeed. The airspeed indicator suffers from a number of errors. The first error is called position error. At high angles of attack, the pitot tube does not get a lot of air. Let me just draw this out. Let's just say here is our pitot tube. Okay, let's say we're straight and level. Here is our air. All of this air is going into the pitot tube. Now let's say we're flying at a high angle of attack. Okay, here is the air and we can see not a lot of air is going to go in here. We'll discuss this uh, in a later slide, uh, how to correct for this. Another potential error is a blocked pitot tube. In this case, the airspeed indicator will act like an altimeter, because as you'll learn in your next lesson, it will essentially be constructed the same way. What that means is that in a climb, the airspeed indicator will overread, and in a descent, it will underread, or act like an altimeter. Another potential error is a blocked static port. With a blocked static port, the airspeed indicator will decrease in a climb, an increase in a descent. The reason for this is because the airspeed indicator cannot compensate for the change in the outside air pressure. The airspeed indicator has a number of important markings. Starting at the bottom, we have a white arc. I'll just point it out here. Right here is the white arc. I'll make this red. Uh, there we go. The bottom of the white arc is the stall speed with the flaps down. The top of the white arc is the maximum flap extension speed. So if you're flying in the circuit and you want to put your flaps down, you must be within this white arc. The bottom of the green right here is the stall speed with flaps up or the clean stall speed. The top of the green is VNO, the maximum normal operating speed. That is also the bottom of the yellow arc. The top of the yellow arc, or the red line up here, is the never exceed speed. You absolutely cannot exceed this speed. Let's talk about the definitions for different air speeds. First off is the indicated air speed. The indicated airspeed is the actual airspeed that you read on the airspeed indicator. Secondly, we have a calibrated airspeed, and we discussed this earlier when we were discussing errors. At high angles of attack, often the indicated airspeed is under reads. 
And so we have something called calibrated airspeed. It is the indicated airspeed corrected for position error. We can use an airspeed calibration table found, found in the pilot operating handbook. So for example, let's look at flaps up at 90 knots indicated airspeed. So we will have it right there. And we look at the 90 knots, the actual calibrated airspeed is 87 knots. Conversely, if we go on the low end, at let's say 40, we have an indicated airspeed of 40. The actual calibrated airspeed is 43. Thirdly, let's talk about true airspeed. True airspeed is the actual speed of the aircraft going through the parcel of air. It is the calibrated airspeed corrected for air density, which is pressure, altitude, and temperature. We determine true airspeed using a flight computer. You will learn how to do this in your navigation uh, lesson. A rough guess though is true airspeed is indicated airspeed plus 2% for 1,000 feet. So let's say we are at 10,000 feet and doing 100 knots. Well, 10,000 times 2%, that's 20%. So our true airspeed at 10,000 feet is going to be roughly 120 knots. Lastly, ground speed is the true airspeed corrected for wind. It is the actual speed of the aircraft over the ground. And again, we will be using a flight computer to calculate ground speed during your navigation lesson. Let's review the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator measures dynamic pressure, which is the total pressure from the pitot tube minus the static pressure from the static port. It suffers from position and angle inaccuracies. The indicated airspeed is what's measured on the airspeed indicator. The calibrated airspeed is indicated airspeed corrected for position error. Look at the pilot operating handbook for the correction. True airspeed is the calibrated airspeed corrected for air density. If the pitot tube becomes blocked, the airspeed indicator acts like an altimeter, meaning it'll overread in a climb, underread in a descent. If the static port becomes blocked, the airspeed indicator will underread in a climb and overread in a descent. Here's our first sample test question. In an airspeed indicator, the pitot tube measures A, total pressure, B, dynamic pressure, C, static pressure, and D, normalized pressure. Recall that the pitot tube measures total pressure. When we subtract total pressure minus static pressure, we end up with dynamic pressure, which is what the airspeed indicator indicates, but the pitot tube measures the total pressure. The actual speed of an aircraft through a parcel of air is called well, indicated airspeed, that's not correct because that is what the airspeed indicator indicates. B, actual airspeed, no, that term doesn't exist. C is the correct answer. True airspeed it is the true air speed through the air. Calibrated airspeed is the indicated airspeed corrected for position error. On climb out, you notice that your airspeed is abnormally high considering your pitch attitude and power setting. What could you do to remedy this situation? So this should trigger a few things in your mind. It's abnormally high. So what you don't want to do is power back or pitch up more. Just fly the pitch attitude that you're used to and keep the power setting and try to figure out what's wrong. So if it's abnormally high, it means it's overreading in the climb. So a likely problem would be that your pitot tube is blocked. So let's go through these answers. A, select alternate static. That's not correct, we're not talking about the static. B, turn on the pitot heat. That's the correct answer. If the pitot tube is blocked, turn on the pitot heat and hopefully you can melt out whatever's in there. C, raise the nose to decrease your airspeed to the normal climb speed. That sounds like a really bad idea and here's why. Just because the airspeed indicates, let's just say, where it should be. But if your pitch attitude is way too high, it means that you might be awfully close to a stall. D, reduce power. Same rationale as the last one. Correct answer? Turn on the pitot heat. You may have a pitot blockage.